Boom. And we are live. I am live with the, the Memphis Belle herself, Shelly Anderson. I'm really excited. Uh, Shelly reached out to me because she is interested in learning more about lead conversion. Um, I'm sure to you know help some uh, help add some additional funds to the bottom line. So with that being said, Shelly, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing really, really good. So um, first of all, congratulations on um, taking, you know, an additional step in getting the information you need to um, to help convert more deals. And uh, I'm certainly glad to be uh, the individual who uh, uh, who gets an opportunity to sit down with you and, and at least share what I've learned uh, over the last few years to help grow a team that sells over 300 homes a year. And um, and I think I can at least share with you some information that will hopefully help to, uh, get, get you over that, that hump. Great. So um, I know when you originally reached out to me, your topic of discussion was um, lead conversion. And that is a very hot topic around our industry. And, and certainly right. we've heard dozens of different mm -hmm. tactics and, and people are trying to sell all kinds of stuff based on uh, not only producing lead, but, but converting them, right? So right. um, what I want to do with you is just get really granular. I want I want you to tell me right now. Um, well, tell me a little bit about your business. How long have you been in business? Five years. Okay, so you're five. And years in. Five years. Okay, and I know you're at EXP. How long have you been over at EXP Realty now? Since April. Okay. Well, welcome to the family. Um, this really isn't about what company we work for. It's more about just providing you value um, and something that you can take away. And certainly we'll record uh, the show for you and you'll be able to have a copy of that to reference anytime. So tell me um, in your business now, um, tell me what is your current lead uh, lead strategy? How are you, how are you uh, generating leads for your business? You know, I, I'm pretty techie, so I mean, I can get the leads. I can do a Facebook home valuation, a next door home valuation. I can call for sell by owners and get appointments. Um, I can get the leads. Yeah, it's just getting them to the table. How, how do I turn those over? I, I have such a difficulty there. Yeah. I try to create drips and um, call and stay up, to, you know, where um, I'm kind of top of mind without driving them crazy. Yeah. And it, 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 <laughs> it, is, it, is the, it is the crux that all of us are, are trying to solve oftentimes. And, you know, the answer to that question, well, first of all, um, let's, why don't we categorize the leads that you're trying to convert? Okay. So let's just, let's deal with one category at a time. So I know you'd mentioned a couple different categories. One that you, I heard you mention was home valuations, correct? Right. Okay. And so when you generate home valuation leads, what are you using to generate those with? What tool? Um, you know, I can, I've used a few tools. I've used <clears throat> just a Facebook squeeze page, kind of a landing page squeeze page. And um, then I've used recently, I've used KV Core. Okay. Awesome. Which is and, a product provided by EXP. So good for you. And so right. they provide the squeeze page for you. And so you're gener right. you're using the squeeze page or the landing page to uh, to advertise to folks on Facebook, right? Right. I say, <clears throat> Jonathan Dupree, you know, he teaches real estate 101 in the world and he's awesome. And so he threw out this uh, squeeze page that said, hey, my family and friends are always asking me, what is my home worth? Mm -hmm. So um, click, put in your address. Dress, click right here and get a home valuation. I put this tool together for you, for my neighbors and friends, put in your address. And I mean, you can get, you know, if you don't stop it, you can get a hundred leads. I don't want to do that. I want to get, you know, 30 leads and then work those and, yeah. you know, bring them through. Yeah. Hey, well, here's the thing. Okay. With home now, now we're speaking specifically to home valuation leads. Okay. Um, because, um, the thing about home valuation leads is that especially when you're advertising 
to uh, people on Facebook is that you, you've got to look at the, the conversion ratio. In other words, what is, the, what is the highest probability of being able to convert this lead? Is it for every 100 leads I generate, um, you know, three appointments and one sale? And, and, and the thing about Facebook is, is while you can definitely generate a lot of leads, I mean, there are people, let's face it, like me and you, um, who, who are just scrolling through our newsfeed and we see this ad and, you know, yeah. we're not necessarily thinking about selling our home, but we are interested in our home value, right? Whereas you look at a platform like, um, or, or when people go on to Google, right? People will go on to Google and they're specifically searching for what is the value of my home. So um, while while you might have a higher conversion ratio off uh, doing some pay per click on Google than you would on, um, on on Facebook, doesn't mean you can't find good leads. It just may take more leads to convert to a sale. If that makes sense. Um, Have you used Nextdoor? Yeah, I love Nextdoor. That's what I've been using. Okay. Nextdoor. And yeah. I would think that that would be um, probably a little higher conversion rate than Facebook because yeah. they're your actual neighbors and um, and friends. So I won't, we won't get too deep into how you're generating the leads. I really just wanted to understand what the platform that you were using were. And it's good that you're using a platform. And it sounds to me like... Um, the first thing I was going to talk to you about is that you made sure that those leads were being captured and then distributed into some sort of a contact relationship manager. And it sounds like you're doing that, right? Because you have KB Core. Right. So you, you're generating all these leads and they're now they're all in one place and you're just like, holy heck, well, how in the heck? I've, I've got all these people in one place. Now it's it's time to go in and, and, and really try to, to, to uh, get granular and convert these to a sale, right? Right. So as you're doing that, how many, how long have you been going about this uh, home valuation strategy? I would say for maybe, maybe two full months, I've been dripping on them, you know, telling them that that home, home valuation that they got is probably not accurate. It looks at averages, you know, I, um, real estate agent needs to come into their home, look at their updates, look at how nice their homes home is to give them a true value. Yeah. And, and what's happening when, when you're doing that right now? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> so you've not gotten any clients from it. No. So 60 days worth of lead generation for home values and, and nothing to show for it. Right. Right. And so what, what is the current strategy in place, um, Shelly, for um, for lead follow up? Like, obviously, you have a, a a strategy for phone calls, right? So you're probably when if you get a a lead that fully fills out your form, you and they're providing you a phone number, you're then calling that phone number, right? So you have a right. phone number, an email address, and a property address, right? Right. So the, 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 three, the three forms of marketing that we know we can get from that uh, are uh, making a call, right? Right. Um, mailing a letter, because we have the address, right? Or sending right. an email, right? Right. Uh, and then in most cases, if you have a cell phone number and an email address, you can get their social media platform as well. And if, and, and if, the, if, if it came in through social media, a lot of times you can get uh, that information regardless. Um, so what is the strategy? Let's just go through one of those categories um, and we'll do each of them. We'll start with phone calls. So you, a lead comes in and you're calling when? Immediately? I, a day later? No, I don't. I, um, I feel like, you know, it says that this is a tool. So the first thing I do is shoot them an email that says, hey, I know you got this home valuation and um, I just want you to know how generic it is. It is built on averages. The algorithms aren't great. You need a human set of eyes, a good agent to come in and, and look at your home. So that's how I start. <clears throat> and then I call. About two, two days after that, I usually pick up the phone and make a phone call. Hey, I hope you got my the home valuation you wanted and 
the text or the email that I sent you about it being based on averages. Um, and it's always, I just am not getting a lot of answers, you know, picking up people picking up. So I'm leaving a lot of messages, yeah. but you know, I've read leave messages, don't leave messages, but I believe you should leave a message. At least it's a touch Yeah. and, and then try again. So you know what the best message you could ever leave is what? hi, Sue, this is Shelly Anderson. Give me a call. Okay. Not trying to. Yeah. And then they, because they're, they're curious who you they're are. Like, they're like, hmm. Yeah. yeah. I always call them. I'm always like, hey, Sue, this is That's Michael. Morning. Or, hey, Sue, it's Mike. Give me a call. Right. Cause yeah. Wouldn't, isn't that the way a friend would call? Exactly. Not, it wouldn't be, hey, this is Mike Wall with EXP Realty. I'm calling because you filled out a registration on my website to get your home evaluation. No You're going to be like, no, nah, I'm not calling him. But here's where I think, I think I can really help you, okay? I think that if you would reverse the phone call and the email, in other okay. words, you would make the phone call right away. Okay. Send the email maybe a day or two later. Okay. You would have a lot better response than what you're getting right now. Have you ever? I'll when, do you, it. when you get off this, when you get off this call, I want you to Google uh, lead response study. Okay. Because one of the Ivy League schools did a lead I response study. That. Yeah, and it showed that you you, you need to make contact with the lead in the first five minutes, and I think it's even gotten shorter than that right now. I think it's like two minutes now. Right. Because in reality, you want to catch them in front of their computer while they're still in the mind frame of what's my house worth, right? Okay. Because then you're going to be able to have an intelligent conversation with that person. Then you're not going to catch them, you know, when right when they were, are going into work or, you know, in, right. in, in some other um, uh, situation where they're just not able to talk to you, right? You know that right. if you call within the first 30 seconds, that they're still probably involved um, in, in, in the thought process of, uh, I'm trying to get the value of my house here, right? So right. I would ask that you continue to generate the leads because you're getting the leads and they're coming in. Um, but when the lead comes in, drop everything you're doing and just make a, a phone call, right? Okay. And then make that phone call. And then if you have a cell phone number, shoot them a quick text message. Hey, this is Shelly. I just left you a message. Hey, thank you so much for filling out this home valuation, I, I wanted just to add some additional things to the information you just got. Give me a call when you get a chance, right? Something very simple like oh, that. I like that. And the then the, yeah, send them an email. I always like, I, when, we, when we get a lead, we treat that lead as if it's the last lead we're ever going to get. You know what I mean? And so okay. we're, when we're thinking how, how, all we're thinking is how can we set an appointment with that lead? And then, and, okay. and then we're thinking of the four channels of communication, right? So the four channels of communication are phone, text, email, and then social media, right? And so it, it, if you, and that, that, that is the way people are choosing to communicate these days. And, and what you want to identify then is what is that person's choice of communication, right? If you, if you call them and you leave them two messages, but they text you twice, I wouldn't call them again. You know right. what I mean? I don't call them they're ready to set an appointment with you because it's obvious that they choose to communicate via text, right? Right. So I, that's a one small um, modification you can make to your current lead follow-up strategy that I think will add some value and, and potentially help you convert more leads or at least connect with more leads to find out if they're actually viable and there's an opportunity there. I'll okay? definitely do that. And, you know, another thing I like to do with the home valuation leads is if you do make contact with them is um, we have a service through our MLS and, and I'm sure everybody has a similar service, but we use it's called RPR. Oh, I love RPR. Yeah, you can put together a nice little report on RPR, a seller's report and package that in a um, I, I always go and, our, and I tell my agents to go to the FedEx store or to the UPS store and they give you free envelopes there. You know what I mean? Right. So if you go and ask for uh, a dozen free. envelopes. Yeah. Yeah. And they will give those to you for free. And what you do is you package that report into a FedEx or a UPS envelope and put your business card and, um, and, and just drop it off on their front doorstep. If it's a listing you really want. And they, they a hundred percent of the time they're going to open that. 
right? <laughs> and, yeah, and then they're gonna they're gonna call you like, and they're gonna they're probably gonna at least call and say, hey, thank you so much for the report. We're not interested in selling it this time, but in the event that we do, you know, we certainly like what you put together here, right? Okay. So really, I mean, if you if you if you're I find what we're doing a lot of times is we're generating a lot of leads and then we feel really good about how many leads we generated. Yeah. I hate that. Um, and then we're looking less at what we're converting, right? I would rather generate less leads and convert more leads, right? Yeah. I like what you said about just act like it's the last lead you're ever going to get. What are you going to do with it? Yeah. You're, you're, you're going to groom, you're going to baby it and <laughs> groom yeah. it. And, and I always like when we, we meet with our team every Monday and I always tell our, our team, um, we, we live in an industry with such high margins that it's OK to get the answer. No, most of the week. Right. right. We, we often hear the answer. No, 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 no. But we're really only looking for that one. Yes. If we can get if we can in our marketplace here, we don't have a high average sale price. But if we can get one yes per week we can make a six figure income here in our marketplace. Just one. I like that. I like that, Mike. Yep. Just and so, for, you know, one yes per week. One yes. And we we have a tendency as, as human beings, I think to get defeated when we right. continually hear the answer no time yep. after time after time. But here's the reality. You can hear the answer no for four days straight, right? Monday through Thursday and then get a yes on Friday and still make a six figure income. So right. not many other industries, Shelly, that you can do that in, but we're fortunate enough to work in one that you can. I love that. Yeah. So with the home valuation strategy, I think, again, if you just make a couple small tweaks there, uh, reverse the, the, the email and the phone call, and I think you'll start seeing some better results. Um, one thing I want you to keep an eye on too, is uh, your lead acquisition cost. So okay. and that would be that would be the amount of money you're spending divided by mm -hmm. uh, the, the number of leads that you're getting, because you want to know what each one of those opportunities is costing you. OK, right. Because it, at the end of the day, um, we want to hold that money accountable, because if we do this for another two months and it's not yielding any results, even after making these small modifications, we may choose to reallocate that money to something that is actually bringing us in uh, a return on our investment. Okay. Does that make sense? So we talked about the whole valuation. What other kind of uh, lead generation channels are open for you right now in your business? I tell you another thing that I was doing, I, instead of on next door, I did some home valuation on a uh, ad on Facebook and when someone asked for one, I actually would immediately shoot them a text and say, hey, I would love to drop this by to you. Um, I'll, I do this every Sunday and I'll see you Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And I knock on their door and a lot of the times I get to go face to face and hand deliver it. Wow. And that way I did get some business. Yeah. And so that um, I love that, by the way, um, I love that because of where you're at in your business. Um, you you have an opportunity to go out and be able to do that because um, there is nothing more powerful than being able to get belly belly with with it, with a potential client. You know what I mean? And, and you especially if you have something of value you're, you're delivering. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And you know what amazes me is sometimes they're not even super nice to me when I hand deliver it. But then they call me back and say, you know, I really liked that you hand delivered that. Yeah. So in your business today, um, another thing I want you to look at is look back at 2018 and um, of all the transactions you've done, um, figure out where your business is coming from. Right. Because okay. it's, it, 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 it's one thing, I, you know, the thing that I built my business on is calling expired leads. And I think the one thing uh, that I did right in my business was that I squeezed all the opportunity out of expired leads that I could before I moved on to what uh, initially was my next strategy, which was uh, buyer lead generation. Um, and, and so what I mean by that is if you go back and look at all your transactions for 2018, 
and let's say, you know, let's just say you've done 12 transactions, okay? Um, and six of them came from your sphere of influence, and then the rest of them came from home valuation leads, buyer leads, open houses, whatever. Um, I would then, I, I might reinvestigate where I'm spending that money uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of home valuation leads and, and anything else out that I'm using uh, money for to generate leads, and say, okay, I'm spending, I'm spending three hundred and fifty dollars a month on home valuation leads, and it's yielding me uh, little to nothing. Uh, but most of my business is coming from my sphere, and I'm I'm spending little to no money at all marketing to my sphere, right? And 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 then you need, and then that warrants a conversation about, okay, so. How can I pull that $350 from, uh, from online lead generation or, or home valuation or whatever you're doing and then reallocate it that to nurturing my sphere, to generate business from my sphere, okay. right? Okay. Here's, here's what's really awesome, right? And I, we had our Monday morning meeting this, this, this morning and, and I talked about this. Um, the, the great thing about your sphere of influence and your past clients is that these people, they already know, like, and trust you, right? They already know, right. like, and trust you. And, and so what it's your job then to do is to, um, it is to stay top of mind. And the way right. that you stay top of mind is you, you can use those, uh, those four marketing channels again, right? So phone, right. email, mail, uh, text. Well, I, I guess the fifth one would actually be social media, right? To stay top of mind. And so what, what you don't want to do is lose mind share with those individuals um, because they will champion you without you having to spend a whole heck of a lot of money. I use a service right now called um, send out cards. Yeah. Okay? And it's a great service. It's automated. But when we close a deal, my contract manager is required to get their anniversary, their birthday, their children's birthday, and then we send cards out for all, all major holidays as well. And they get on their birthday, they get a, a package of two brownies. And, and, and this is, I don't tell you this to, to, uh, to boast or to brag. I tell you this just, just because what we're, again, what we're doing is we're creating top of mind awareness, right? right. With that, we're trying to get the mind share of that individual. And so, um, you know, I, I, I think it's great that you're trying to generate leads. I just want to make sure that when you're generating leads, you're generating them from a category that is servicing you the best. In other words, you're getting the best dollar for dollar return on the leads that you're generating. Right. So, so promise me you'll do that. You'll look at your sphere. You'll look at where your business is coming from and then, and then try to double down on where your business is coming from. It's okay, okay to continue to investigate other lead channels, but make sure that you've gone as deep as possible on the lead channel that's feeding you the most. Okay. Because you may you, you may have only gone you may have only just reached the surface of what you can do from that lead generation channel and I'll give you an example okay so when I got into the business and I just started calling expireds I I I literally used the data from the MLS and the white pages okay because I didn't have any money I had a lot of time but I didn't have any money and what happened when I started to generate business. I started to make a little money, so I reinvested that money to save me time, right? And what yeah. happened is I made more money, I bought more time. I made more money, I bought more time. I made more money, I bought more time. When And, and then so I got to this place uh, where then I employed uh, Red X, and then I found Vulcan 7, and you know then I found uh, a contract manager, right? So I'm, I'm constantly buying back time. And then I found, you know, ISAs, right? So... That, that is the evo the natural evolution of a real estate business um, in, in le that's living a life of leverage at the highest level. So leveraging other people's time so that you can have more time to do the things that you need to do to stay more dollar productive, if that makes sense. Right. Absolutely. So, yep. And so uh, I don't I don't want to get too far off topic, but OK, so um, your your bit, the lead generation that you're doing right now, the home valuations. Again, I think it's okay to continue to investigate that and try to uh, make those small tweaks that we talked about. Um, and in fact, I would encourage you to do that. Uh, what are some other lead generation channels that you're currently utilizing? 
Well, I tell you what I'm working on. I've been working with a lender and a title company guy, and we're trying, we're in the process of choosing a farm. And then we are going to just okay. dominate that neighborhood. Um, I've got lots of ideas of ways to do that from other EXP people, from mm -hmm. um, Brenda Stone and from, oh, what is his name? Uh, Mike. Oh, I can't think of it. Oh, don't worry about it. It's, it, it, it the, the, the good news is you're doing something. Now, um, what I would do when choosing a neighborhood yeah. is make sure you understand the turnover rate in a, in a specific neighborhood. Absolutely. That's what I'm looking for. And you want to be above 6% if you can. Seven, okay. Yeah, 7% is what? Uh, 2 and 3% is not going to yield you very much of a return because uh, right. doing mailers it is a long-term strategy. Uh, it, the funny thing it is, you know, is it all goes back to mind share, right? right. Uh, you're, you're trying to, um, you're trying to get the mind share of the consumer so that when the consumer thinks about real estate, they think about you, right? Exactly. I mean, we want to do things like block the entrances in the morning, like, you know, twice a year and hand out uh, chicken biscuits or, some, you know, have a um, movie night and have all of the families in the neighborhood. And I mean, we want to do some kind of big things and really monopolize the neighborhood. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And if they're willing to get in and get dirty with you, that's great. Yeah, I'm excited about that. So, you know, just remember, it's not a, what I don't want to happen to you is that we're just, we're, we're trying all these different things because. Um, I've never done this in five years. I've always wanted to farm. I've never done it because I knew it took a hundred percent commitment. You know, we're talking not six months. We're talking a year and on for a return. And, um, oh, I know another thing that I'm doing. Okay. I started a teacher program where uh, every Friday, I live in a small town, but I live in a big city, okay. in a, a suburb of the big city. Um, and every Friday, the school's algorithm system draws two teachers that win gift cards to be able to buy supplies from these gift cards instead of out of their pocket. Mm -hmm. And um, the lender and I uh, came up with this program and then they get our flyer and they get a highlighter because they're the highlight of our community. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and then the reason we're going to farm in Collierville is because all those teachers live in Collierville. Sure. So it's just one more, you know, layer of icing on top of uh, doing the teacher program. Also dominating a neighborhood. Hopefully yep. where there's some teachers. So let's talk about that teacher program a little bit, because I, I think, that again, that's that's something where you're delivering value, right? But you you want right. to make sure that you have some sort of a lead capture strategy in place, right? So right. that is a great opportunity for you to capture contact information, right? Yeah. Uh, and then be able to remarket to these people. Um, yeah. and, and 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 again, remember it it all we all if we if if we rewind the tape on this thing, you're gonna hear hear me say it over and over and over, right? It's all about mind share and. And so for you, the mind share in the teacher community is right. Hey, we have this program where, you know, we're, we're, we're the ones that are giving away the gift cards to help you guys buy supplies for your classroom. Right. And oh, by the way, I sell real estate, right? So and, if you're lucky to buy or sell, I can sell you a home. You use us, you get this amount off of your commission and this amount off on your closing. Yep. Yep. And, and, you know, you know, if, if you're, if you're, if you have programs like that in place, I think they're fantastic. Um, we have a program called the hero house project, um, which uh, we actually 
Um, we provide uh, services for uh, active military, retired military, policemen and women, firemen and women, um, oh, healthcare wow. professionals, and teachers. And and uh, what happens is they get a twenty percent um, rebate back uh, at closing of the commission. And wow. um, and and what's great about our little city here is that. Um, a lot of this city is made up demographically of those type of folks. So we found a great niche for those people. And not yeah. only that, we're able to serve and to give back and feel really good about what we do. But, um, but so, so to your, to, to your thought process, I think that you have to have a strategy in place to make sure that you're capturing the name and email and contact information. So phone number of those individuals and that, right. listen, Shelly, this is a great opportunity to, to remarket to those individuals. So, you know, if you, meet, you know, uh, if you meet a teacher and she wins the gift card, have a conversation with her. Hey, I, I, I actually, I've sold property in your neighborhood and um, uh, I have a really good uh, pulse on the value of, uh, of, uh, of this particular neighborhood. And I, you know, a lot of your neighbors have asked me that I send them updates, not daily, not weekly, but monthly on what's going on into the neighborhood. Would it be okay if I do that with you as well? Right. Right. And then you send them the home about the monthly home evaluation. Right. And and so you, and, and then you're in the process of building a database. Right. Exactly. And it, what, what, that's when it gets so fun. It's like compound interest. You know what I mean? It's the eighth exactly. wonder. The that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. And, and I think I think building a database should be the ninth wonder of the world. I think that when you build a database um, and you continually nurture that database, that it will feed yeah. you for the rest of your career so that your business it's like a plane when it takes off, right? A plane when it takes off, uh, it, it 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 takes the most amount of fuel to get off the ground, right? right. But when it gets off to the ground and it gets at thirty thousand feet, uh, then they 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 pull the throttle back, right? And then they're just, I mean, they're moving along in the air, and that's where you can, if you can continue to do what you're doing, right? You build a database uh, by continuing to generate leads and follow up. Uh, uh, appropriately, you will build a database, a nice database that will uh, that will fulfill you for the rest of your life. And that's what I'm working on since being with the EXP. And I yeah. will, is I'm building a database that I constantly try yeah. to bring value to. And the CRM is the key piece of that. So it's great that you have KB Core in place um, because you get that free, right? It's that's yeah. your that's for your tech fee. And, and, yeah. and so you get all those people into one place and that you, you really start marketing to that, that, uh, that database, because that database will, again, like I said, it will, it will, it will ensure that you live a nice life and are able to, um, you know, have the things that you want. You know, right. what, here's what I, what, what I would do if I were you. Okay. Um, I would make sure that, uh, you look at, you know, uh, where your business is coming from, right? So look at the transactions you've done this year, find out where they're coming from, double down at that. And then, and then maybe pick one or two other lead generation channels to focus on right now. Okay. Uh, right now also, Shelly is a great time to start building out your business plan for 2019, right? Uh, because if you wait until December or January, um, you're going to be you're going to be behind other agents because we know in our industry that uh, there's usually a 30 to 45 day carry over time between the time mm -hmm. we write a contract and the time it closes. So while the market starts to soften a little bit, um, it, it is a good time for you to spend some time business planning for 2019. Write those lead generation strategies down. Okay. Write them down and, you know, write them down and then figure out what you need to do, not to go a mile wide, but a mile deep on each one of those lead categories. Right. right. Um, and, and again, that that's because what, and I've done, I'm guilty of this myself. I, I've had a tendency in my business. Uh, you know, we've all heard of the shiny squirrel, right? That, and it, and it gets really dangerous when you have some money in your business because you know, you can throw money at things. Uh, and in reality is they, they look really nice and they sound really nice but the, the ROI is just not there. So, um, you know, be careful on, on I, I think with the strategies that you are talking about, I don't think that, um, I, don't, I don't, the only thing that you wanna make sure with the mailing strategy is that you, you understand it's a long-term play. And what I mean right. long-term play, it's, it's 12 months plus before you'll see right. the, the fruits of that labor. 
But man, building the relationships through that teacher community, I love that. Yeah. I think that will do really well for you. I think it will also. I'm excited, just like you said, the layering. Yep. And so, you know, just just remember, um, figure out what you're good at. Figure out what, um, and you'll you understand what you're good at because you'll feel comfortable when you're doing it. You know what I mean? Um, right. And you know, make sure when you're calling these people, you're calling with um, a servant's heart and not you're not calling for a commission check. Um, people, I'm calling here's the, the problem when you call for a commission check or when you call to take something from someone yeah. is usually you don't remember what to say because you're, you're not in alignment with who you are as a human being. But when you call from a place of service, you never forget what to say. It's really, really cool. That. Yep. So yeah. listen, you're right on track. Uh, I'm excited to see what you do in your business. I think uh, you're going to do some big things. I think 2019 is going to be a big year for you. And I think that um, if you start now, um, you could finish this year strong and have some great momentum as you roll into 2019. Thanks, Mike. You're absolutely awesome. welcome. You're absolutely welcome. And listen, if anybody is watching this video, uh, and it looks like there are several people watching um, please, please, please go to liverealestatecoaching.com and schedule your free 45 minute session with me. Um, uh, nothing is out of bounds. We'll talk about anything you want to in your business. I'll share the strategies that have helped me sell over 300 homes a year and uh, hopefully take your business to the next level. So with that, Shelly Anderson, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you at EXPCon and uh, please don't hesitate to call or email me if you have any questions. I'll do it. Thank you so much, Mike. All right, Shelly. Bye-bye. Bye. Great job.